Why has it done that? It's because it's moving, isn't it? The camera doesn't know where to focus. Yeah, if it goes again. <laughs> Come on, camera. It's just an engine. Welcome back to the shed. Now this is my latest little wigwag engine design and this is called the wigwag duplex. Now normally when I um, build one of my wigwag engines I sort of uh, I put it together and um, well everything kind of works. Well I spent all weekend um, trying to get this running actually and it just wouldn't run right and I wasn't sure exactly what was causing it. Uh, I went through everything I thought maybe there was a, a slight misalignment you know in the uh, in the bearing on the on the secondary side. So I, uh, I remade, remade the, um, the bearing in there just to make sure, but that didn't seem to, to work either. And what it was, it was, it was just like, um, you know, it just had a stiff point. Uh, well, two, st two stiff points. And I couldn't figure it out because, you know, everything individually running absolutely beautifully. And, uh, you know, everything, I mean, all the pistons were smooth and that, and I just couldn't figure it. Anyway, eventually I sort of, I sort of narrowed it down that what was happening when, when, the, uh, when the piston was rising up to the top it was kind of uh, it was getting locked basically it, it was getting air locked so it was obviously uh, the piston was obviously coming past the porthole and it still had a little bit of travel and obviously it was compressing against well you know compressed air it's got nowhere to go the air had nowhere to flow out and um, although it would run with really high pressure uh, it just wouldn't run slow and it was very lumpy. So anyway, I thought I'd, uh, you know, I couldn't figure out exactly what was going on. Uh, you know, I remeasured everything, all my, my lengths of my shafts, the pistons, the stroke, and everything, everything sort of seemed normal, you know, to all my drawings and that. And then I eventually, well, I've only found it today, it's Monday today, so I spent all weekend buggering about with this, getting nowhere. And then today I sort of went back to my original drawings and checked everything and I realised my mistake. What I've done is I've actually, when I've marked out the uh, positions for uh, the pivot point, for some unknown reason, I'm actually three millimetres lower than I should be. And I could only imagine what I did was uh, I took the measurement perhaps from the, from the axle shaft and obviously that means six millimetres. I obviously took away... Uh, the, you know, 50% of that, so three millimetres, and, uh, and mark my positions. But what I must have already have done is already taken the three millimetres off in my head, and then took another three off. So I ended up three millimetres down. But of course, that, well, not for not only uh, giving me all the trouble with the, obviously the pistons were coming up, uh, you know, three millimetres higher into the cylinder, covering the porthole, air locking. Um, you know, and also also the porthole. I suddenly realised maybe the portholes aren't uh, you know aligning properly, because that was an, another one of the sort of issues that I thought it was. Anyway, finally I've sort of sorted it. Well, I haven't sorted it yet, but what I've actually had to do is um, well, I've had to obviously reduce the length of the piston by uh, three millimetres. So I've taken sort of two millimetres off the top, like off the top crown, and then I've just put a. Um, a 45 degree uh, chamfer on there to you know to be able to bring it down a bit more as well so hopefully when I put it back together now it should run a bit smoother because the thing has been driving me nuts actually absolutely driving me nuts so it's uh, it's just good to actually um, well realize what the problem was and of course it was uh, my own stupid mistake and of course what do they always say measure twice drill once well you know this time I've learned that valuable lesson once again and uh, as I have done many times and I'm sure I'll learn it again 
but you know, an, another lesson to myself. I also nearly, nearly drilled the, uh, the. I don't know whether you can see the centre dot there. I nearly drilled the uh, the crossover tube into the exhaust port, which of course would have been a disaster. Well, I'd have to have plugged it up with whatever and that, you know. But but yeah, another 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 version of uh, you know measure twice, drill once, or at least think about it before you drill it. Anyway, let's get it assembled and uh, hopefully, hopefully this time, it'll run. Woohoo! Okay, so I'm finally ready for assembly. Put my usual uh, maker's mark on the bottom there. So, um, I'll get this assembled. if I put the, uh, the piston on. Get my compressor on. See how it goes. So hopefully put a compressed air. Still a little bit of uh, resistance, but. I'm hoping that will wear in. Just pinch the springs up a bit near the leaking. That doesn't look too bad. Okay, so I've got much to look yet. Perhaps need bedding in a bit. A little bit of an oscillation on the flywheel. I might have to reseat that. Just to hope that's all it is. Tighten up that, uh, oops, I can hold the damn thing. Tighten up the screws a bit. Probably start to seize up now. Yeah, as suspected. Must be a little bit of, a little bit of run out, so I might have to, um, Put some little shims in there, baby. So you what, I'll speed it up a bit. And try again. I think that'll wear in.
Okay, so finally I've managed to get it, uh, finally got it all working. Just giving it a bit of a clean up because I've been running it in. Uh, just to make sure everything's running nice and smooth. Um, now I did have a little bit of a problem with this um, this column here. Whenever I tighten up those screws, the the sort of engine would lock. So there was obviously either a slight discrepancy on either the height with the uh, with the bore with the bore through where the bearing is, or maybe it was just you know tilting slightly over one way or the other. Maybe the base wasn't quite square. Uh, but yeah, as I say, uh, you know, if I tighten it up, I just uh, get the engine would just lock up, and I had to back it off a little bit to sort of uh, to get it loosened up again. So what I did, uh, just as a well, just as a fix, really, um, I just smeared a, a very thin layer of this, um, you know, the JB Weld uh, two-part epoxy sort of uh, metal metal glue, and I just smeared a very thin layer on there. Uh, pinched up the screws while the, while the engine was running just gently pinched up the screws just until it sort of you know just so it didn't lock and then I, I left that to set overnight and um, you know I can then I went then went back and uh, tightened up the screws and uh, all's good so um, I'll get it running I'm going to use this little cork mat simply because my sort of bench acts as uh, like a, an amplifier so uh, I'll just get the get the compressed air on and see if it'll start. And there you go, it's probably still running in a bit. I've just given it a clean up because it was covered in oil, so it probably could do with another another hour, hour and a half running in, something like that. But as you can see it runs um runs pretty sweet. A nice two uh, sort of opposite um, cylinders wobbling away there it's set at the moment to work well it's just set just off being sort of um, 180 degrees to each other uh, that was simply because uh, well, well when I was running it before when it was a bit stiff it needed that sort of kick uh, to be able to get it over uh, but I might have a fiddle with that and sort of see how it um, how it changes the uh, the way the engine runs but yeah as you can see it looks lovely Got a little oiler there, which is obviously drilled through to lubricate that bearing. Uh, there's no oiler in there, but I just, you know, drop a bit of oil down there. And uh, yeah, it's lovely. So the air's fed in from one side, which obviously then can travel across through this uh, crossover pipe uh, into the other, the other side of the um, the engine chassis. And uh, well, the chassis actually was built. It was it was based on the um, you know the the original. Uh, wigwag pattern design. I'll just turn that off for a second and um, well I'll use that mat. So if you um, if you imagine what I did was um, I lined up the uh, you can't see that can you? I lined up the uh, the axle point on the engine and all it was uh, simply uh, opening that up and uh, well, I just decided on like a, a, a 20 degree sort of angle between there. I mean, you know, I didn't, it didn't calculate that or anything. I just sort of guessed. I thought 20 sounded like a like a pretty good number. And then obviously, I just sort of um, you know squared off the bottom. I gave it um, you know just enough so it had um, the flywheel had to uh, clear the base. And uh, of course, you know, I ended up with basically that sort of um, that sort of shape, which is a it looks like a sort of rabbit. I don't know. I don't know what you call it, but obviously that's the uh, that's the shape I went for. And uh, obviously with them being opposite, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's almost a V, but you know, it's sort of a, more of more of an X, really. I thought, which was why I thought I'd call it the uh, the duplex engine because, uh, well, duplicate cylinders, and of course the slightly X shape. So uh, yeah, I thought duplex was a pretty good name for it. Um, so yeah, well, I'll get it back running. I'll do a few close-ups, and uh, I'll come back to you in a minute. Let's see if we can self-start. I think it should be about there. Yay! And it will run fairly slow. Like I say, I could still play around with the uh, the crank positioning, maybe change the timing very slightly, and get it running even slower but like I said I'm going to run it in a little bit more first just to make sure everything's uh, 
play them nice and free. Now people often ask me um, about the springs that I use on the uh, the wigwags and uh, well to be perfectly honest I've never I've always sort of just found springs and picked them up from different things when you know you take stuff apart and you find some springs in it and I keep a sort of you know a couple of boxes of random springs and stuff like that uh, but obviously the original wigwag design um, because of its sort of um, you know the conical sort of shape to the chassis you know, I, I always like to try and use uh, springs which have also got that kind of, um, you know, the conical shape to them. Now, I've used several different types, uh, you know, over the last um, last couple of years while I've been building the wigwags. And uh, obviously also the, uh, the design dictates what type of spring that you need. I mean, I do like this sort of a longer, longer spring, uh, you know, which is very similar to the sort of springs that I had on the original wigwag. But of course, uh, I mean, if you remember my um, my twin wigwag, you know, I wanted to keep the space in there as, as uh, narrow as possible. So I had to find a different type of spring because obviously, you know, these type of springs would have just been a bit too long. And uh, so I, bought, I started buying, well, various springs. Uh, and I found this Chinese um, supplier, actually, um, you know, that and they supply, it's on eBay. And of course, you can, you can buy loads of um, different types of springs off them. Uh, but I found it a bit confusing trying to understand the uh, the way they're all described. Uh, but I think I've finally now got my got my sort of head around it. And um, so I actually keep the uh, the labels when they come in the packets. I buy them in sort of uh, packs of ten and stuff like that, and they come obviously with a label on. So I keep the labels just so I, just for future reference, really. And um, yeah, to, to understand them basically, um, like the first number zero point eight or zero point nine. That's the actual um, diameter of the, of the wire, the wire form. I'll just zero that. So uh, these longer springs were the, uh, the bottom one here. So they're 0 0.9, so 0 0.9 of a millimetre. And um, the, the, bigger, the, the other springs I bought were uh, 0 0.8. So they're obviously 0.8 of a millimetre. And then the... Um, the second number, I'll tell you what, I'll put that up on the up, up on the screen in the video and it will make a bit more sense. Uh, the second two numbers, uh, like 7 and 13 and 8 and 10, is the actual diameters of the uh, the large and the small sizes of the uh, the ends of the spring. And then of course you've got the length, so 14 for the small one and uh, 22 millimetres for the longer one. And then, um, what's the last number? I've forgotten what that is. Oh, that's it. Yeah, the, that's the number of wraps of the uh, the actual spring coil. So uh, you know, the smaller one's got seven wraps: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and uh, obviously that one will have eight eight wraps. And obviously, the the first number dictates its uh, its strength as well. So if you've um, you know the thinner the wire, obviously the easier it is to compress. Um, I found sort of 0 0.9 to be a, a good sort of uh, a good tension. So you can put a bit of tension on, but you're not squashing the the thing down to it uh, so it collapses and it's not strong enough. I would guess, I mean I haven't tried, but I would guess like one millimetre and above would simply be just too stiff really. So um, so yeah, quite quite uh, quite interesting to find, uh, you know, a, a good sort of site on eBay, um, you know, that I can buy these springs from. And like I say, they're, you know, in China and you can buy them in, well, I buy them in packs of 10. 
they cost probably I don't know five or six pounds so you're looking at sort of a 50 60 pence a spring so um pretty good really and uh, you know I'm sure I'll gather quite a collection of those in the future but uh, yeah really enjoyed uh, sorry really really found these uh, these are the per perfect sort of springs for the wigwag which are the, the bigger ones the 22 millimeter long ones so I uh, hope that was a, a little bit of help anyway for those out there looking uh, looking for what sort of spring you can buy of course you can use a, a, just a regular uh, parallel straight edge spring if you want to but I just like to sort of um, add that little bit of touch of class well there you go Another another wigwag built, another one to the collection. Not sure what I'll do next. I might have a break from the wigwags and uh, well, a break from the engines altogether. Actually, I might do something a little bit different. We'll see. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found some of the uh, information useful as well. Um, so yeah, if you could, uh, if you fancy, you can always join us on the uh, wigwag Facebook group got sort of uh, over 100 members there now many of them have uh, built one or at least a couple of the wigwags or, or several as in some cases so yeah it'd be great to see you over there and um, well I'll see you next time well I hope you enjoyed uh, my latest uh, little engine my little wigwag engine it's uh, it's getting very cold in the shed now winter coming so um, I'll see you on the other side Thanks for watching.